It's Murphy's class. This is Mr. Calvert coming to you from my house. Um, recently, Mrs. Murphy emailed me and said that you guys were starting to learn about fractions and you guys were talking about cities. And she had mentioned this artist named Pete Mondrian wanted to know if I knew anything about him. And I said, of course, he's my favorite artist. And she asked if I would um, put together a little video for you guys to um, kind of talk about him. We have learned about him in kindergarten. But that was obviously a long time ago, so we may have forgotten some things. So I thought I would give us a little refresher on Pete Mondrian um, so that you guys are um, familiar with him for your math assignment that you're going to be doing with Mrs. Murphy. Now, Pete Mondrian, he is not alive anymore. Um, passed away quite a while ago. He lived from 1872 to 1944, and he was 71 when he passed away. And he comes from a country called the Netherlands. Um, you may have heard of uh, people being Dutch. Um, if somebody is Dutch, that means that they come from the Netherlands, um, which is a really small country, right where this red dot is um, next to Germany. And we would be right about here on the map. We're in south central Wisconsin. So we'd have to get in a plane or a boat to go over and check out Netherlands. Now, Piet Mondrian, he was a painter. And he is actually really famous for being one of the very first artists to start making abstract artwork. So when we look at his paintings later in life, we don't see people or animals or um, rocks or trees or houses. We a lot of times just see lines and shapes and colors. And um, when you look at his artwork, you'll think that it's very simple. But back then when he was alive, his artwork was really groundbreaking because nobody thought to make artwork like him. Um, People were expected to make pictures of people and animals and houses and things that they could see. Um, they weren't expected to make paintings like what Pete was making. Um, you probably recognize this painting off to the side. We've, as I said, we've learned about him before, and we know that Mr. Calvert, um, he, he's my, or Pete Mondrian's my favorite artist, so we know that my paintings look very similar to his work as well. Um, he was part of a, a movement called De Style. So we've talked about pop artists before. We've talked about um, Impressionists. We've talked about all these different art styles. De Style was a movement that Piet Mondrian helped to start. And um, De Style, is a, uh, that's Dutch for saying the style. That's what it means. Um, and when we look at um, Piet Mondrian's artwork and other De Style artworks, you'll notice that they stick to the primary colors. So red, yellow, and blue. They also let themselves use white, black, and gray, but we don't typically see gray with Pete Mondrian's work. The artwork's very geometric. You'll notice that it's almost always um, squares and rectangles, and they stick to vertical and horizontal lines. And some just style artists will use diagonal lines, but Pete Mondrian was against that. He thought that you um, had to use vertical and horizontal lines. He thought that that was some of the most pure, basic kind of artwork. And one thing I really appreciate about Pete Mondrian is how much his artwork changed throughout his life. Because you might think that once you're an artist, your paintings always look the same. Um, but oftentimes, artists, as they get older, their artwork really adapts and changes. And I think Pete Mondrian is a really great example of seeing how his work um, from when he was younger began to change. So here we see him um, making this painting of a tree. It's pretty lifelike. And then a few years later, he made this painting of a tree. Notice how it starts to get a little bit more abstract looking. It's, um, you know, the branches aren't super branch like there's kind of like these curved lines that kind of overlap. And then a year later, he made this painting of a tree. You can still see some similarities. You know, you see the trunk, you see those same curves, but it's getting more and more basic. You can see that Pete's starting to um, kind of dip into that abstract art. He's starting to experiment a little bit more. It's becoming more geometric looking. A few years later, he began to make paintings like this. We still see the primary colors, um, kind of some tints of those primaries. We see blues and yellows and reds. We still see the vertical and horizontal lines and how they overlap, and they kind of create um, squares and rectangles. A few years later, he began to make um, the artwork that we typically associate with him. We start to see um, those uh, lines that go all the way across his paintings um, and actually when he first started doing a lot of times he would stop his lines right before they got to the edge of his paintings and then later on he began to take those lines right off the edge of his canvas um, also you can tell kind of his earlier works like this because they include more color and then as he got older they began to have less rectangles and squares and less color they began to use more white in them so this would be one of his later ones. We see um, less of the squares and rectangles starting to become more um, pure. Um, 
And a lot of times what he liked to base his artwork on were cities. Okay, if you were a bird and you were flying over a city, what would it look like if you were looking down at that city? We know the cities are made up of blocks. Okay, that's what your house is on. It's on a block. And um, not all blocks are going to be the same size. Some blocks are very large. Some are smaller. Okay, and that's kind of what he based a lot of his paintings on were cities and how they're typically very geometric and gridded. Um, they're not just random squares and rectangles. There's thought and planning that goes into them. Now, this is one of his paintings that he did uh, later in life. You can see how there really isn't a lot of color in this one. A um, couple little spots of red, a little bit of yellow and blue, but most of it's white. Um, so we can tell that this kind of came later in his life. Um, and there is a lot of math and uh, math that goes into this, and that's kind of what you're going to be doing with Mrs. Murphy is working on fractions using um, Pete Mondrian as um, inspiration. And then this was one of his very last paintings, and we've actually seen that block video that you guys really enjoy was inspired by this. Okay, and this one's called Broadway Boogie Woogie. Um, once again, inspired by uh, New York City, actually, um, and lots of those uses of primary colors and vertical and horizontals, squares and rectangles. Um, but this one definitely looks different than those ones that we previously saw. He's turning those lines into the colors. Um, so hopefully you guys enjoyed relearning about uh, Mr. Mondrian. Um, I can't wait to see what you guys make for your math assignment. Um, I think it's pretty cool that Mrs. Murphy and I are having the chance to work together, kind of combining art and math at the same time. So can't wait to see what you guys make. Uh, take care, guys.